All right, hello everyone, and peace of the Lord, peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and share the link for the video with whoever you know. And don't forget to download the video as soon as we finish so you can keep it for your own and post it in other forms as you wish. Today's topic is very important and uh, we'll explore many things which you guys, most of you, do not know. You know, when we speak about Islam, we think about uh, something that's called, uh, like uh, many people think it's a religion, and it is something very well established. They have their books, they have their belief, uh, they have, you know, supposedly. But if you go in details, actually, you will find that the Muslims are bankrupt. Even the Quran, which they are reciting for you, they don't have it. Not a single country of Muslims have a have a Quran can be considered as authentic. Even the Quran, which the Muslims they read today, they say that this is the Quran according to, 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 according to Muhammad. But even that one is a recitation. What does that mean? That's mean they don't have it. Somebody claim, from somebody claim, from somebody claim, from somebody claim, 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 claim from somebody that this is a recitation, not even a book. Not even a book. So what the Muslims have? Nothing. If we go in the first page in the Quran, for those who have the Quran in Arabic, you will see this. It says, It's not even Quran, it's a Mus'haf. Mus'haf is pages. There's no book. This Mus'haf, the generous Mus'haf, was written according to the recitation of Hafs, not the book of Hafs. According to recitation of Asim, which is his stepfather, according to Abi Abdul Rahman, according to uh, you know, I mean, according to according to Uthman, Ali, Zaid, blah 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 blah. blah. Then at the end, according to Muhammad, there's no book. They say this is a tale. Even here in Arabic, it says. The tale of this Mus'haf. Let us make it in blue. Riwayatu had al Mus'haf. The tale of this Mus'haf, not, not Quran, this is a Mus'haf. A Mus'haf is a collection of pages. It can be even one page. Written according to the recitation of Hafs now if we go and check who is Hafs you will see all the Muslims agree that Hafs was a fraud and he was a thief and not only that if Hafs he make a hadith or he come with the hadith the Muslims they are rejected because he is a fraud so the Quran the Muslims the most popular Quran the Muslims today they recite to you is coming from this guy which his name is Hafs as we see in the screen A fraud and this is in their books their scholars they agree that Hafs is a fraud what about his father his father his name is Asim Asim accused by Muslim to be a fraud he's a thief he's a liar he steal books and he claimed that he is the one who wrote them and his hadith is rejected too so the source of the Quran we have today is coming from Two fraud people who exist more than 200 years after Muhammad. They never, Muhammad, never met Muhammad, never heard Muhammad, never, never, they don't know anything about Muhammad. They are just came 200 years after and they are a bunch of corrupt thieves, according to Muslims. Uthman ibn Affan is the first one who burned all the Quran which the Muslims used to have. <clears throat> If we ask Muslims why Uthman he burned the Quran, what does that mean? 
why somebody he is the caliphate is burning the Quran that's mean at that time there's many Quran otherwise there is no need to burn them and they are different correct so that confirmed that from the beginning of Islam there's many Quran and they are totally different to the point that Uthman he took over uh, uh, because of the authority he have now he is the caliphate and he burned all the Qur'ans and he keeps his own but now today we don't have it as you see we have recitation of a guy his name is Hafs and his stepfather his name is Asim and both of them they are fraud so they got nothing if you remember a few years ago uh, uh, they they mentioned that they found a page in the uh, Birmingham uh, manuscript if you remember it but that page was a piece of leather go to the date even before Muhammad not the date of the ink or the writing it was the date of the leather piece which means if I bring it now and I write for it on it that the Muslim they will say oh this is old this is ancient that's not ancient it is the piece of leather not the writing and we can discover that easy because the writing of the Quran in the time of Muhammad should not have dots if you look at the Quran today in Arabic you will see it have dots that is something new so they don't have Quran they don't have any source what about Sahih al-Bukhari the most authentic books for Muslims is Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim what about them guess what they don't have Sahih al-Bukhari and they don't have Sahih Muslim you believe it This is Islamic question answer. This is Islamic website hmm? by Sheikh Muhammad Saleh Al Munjid. Big project, a lot of money involved in it from Saudi Arabia. He's asking about the original copy of Sahih Al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. And now the article go on and on and on and on, but the answer is very simple: we don't have it. We don't have it. Here the guy, the sheikh, is trying to explain to you, brother, a brother, they are asking you, uh, where is the Bukhari and where is Muslims? Because they want to stir up, adopt about anything. Okay, so you, you admitted that this is, will stir adopt about it. So how you confirm that this is Sahih al-Bukhari, but yet you don't have the book of Sahih al-Bukhari? You know what I mean? They say to us the most authentic books of Islam after the Quran is Sahih al-Bukhari but not a single person in the world he have the book of al-Bukhari either the book of Muslim so what do you have we don't have it this is how we deal with many so-called this suspicious argument which are in reality nothing but illusions uttered by some people who are causing us a, tr a, a trouble at, at this time. This is always compels us to start very from the very beginning, establishing the principle of the sounds of rational. Okay, what is the answer? The guy is asking you, do you have the original? The answer, no. What is mentioned in the question, one such example, if what, what the questioner meant by original copy, suddenly now he do not know what original copy. It is the manuscript that the author wrote in his own ha hands. Then according to what rational thinking or logic, it can be said that it, uh, it, it is it's essential that the original manuscript be extant in order to accept that particular book. Is correctly attribute to the author how many books are in the world since people learned how to write that could not meet rational conditions so the answer what we don't have it we don't have it so Islam based on books written supposedly 300 years after Muhammad but even those books we cannot find them Have you ever heard of a madness like this? If you remember, there was a debate between a, a, a Muslim kid, his name is Mimi, and the guy, his name is David. Mimi said to David, the book of John, 
written more than 60 years after Jesus. Sixty years after Jesus, it's rejected by Muslims. They don't have Quran, they don't have Al Bukhari, and even Al Bukhari, in even the Quran they have today, even that the, the recitation is recitation of a guy who came more than two hundred years after Muhammad. The Quran, Al Bukhari, and Sahih Muslim, more than three hundred years after Muhammad. But still, we don't have those books. We don't have them. It's a statement of somebody saying, there's a guy, his name is Al-Bukhari, and he wrote a book. But nobody saw the book. Nobody hold the book. Nobody know the book. And how in the world, the, you know, they say to us, a student of Al-Bukhari, or people who heard Al-Bukhari, they, uh, they copy Al-Bukhari. Well, what students? So to make it simple, Islam is a religion based on nothing. All the stories they have is a fairy tales. And just to show you an example of the stupidity of this belief. And by the way, when I say a stupidity, I'm not here to insult. This is my private opinion, and I'm afraid to express my opinion. Uh, if we go in the, in, the, in the Hadith, those are the books of Hadith, as you see. We try to find something useful on the books of Al-Bukhari. Look what we find. One of the wives of Allah Apostle joined him in Itikaf, and she noticed a blood and yellowish discharge coming from her peep, and she put a dish between her legs. I mean, I have to admit that Sahih al-Bukhari is a book of history. The vagina of the wife of the Prophet entering history now. And now we notice that what happened in such a date that the vagina of His Majesty, wife, she was a dripping yellowish liquid. This is a book of religion. Al-Bukhari, who existed 300 years after Muhammad. The news reached to him the story about the vagina of Muhammad's wife. 300 years after, people, they're talking about the vagina. Brothers, do you know that once the wife of the Prophet, she have a yellowish uh, coming from her peep. And she put a dish under her beep, and it was a dripping beep. This is what the Muslims was carrying. This is the this is the heritage of Islam, and this is Islam now. And now we write it in a book, and then we read it, and then we learn from it. What we learn from this that obviously Muhammad wives they have infection. This is obviously. It is not normal. This is infection. All of them, they are infected. So, the Muslim Sunni, they are desperately in love with Al-Bukhari and Sunnah and, and, uh, and Sahih Muslim. But we don't have Sahih Muslim. We don't have Al-Bukhari. So, they have nothing. And we don't have Quran. So what the Muslims have? What the Muslims exactly have? Nothing. So when a Muslim, he come to you and he speak to you about your Bible is corrupt, first of all, he is attacking his own religion because according to Muslims, they believe that Allah is the one who sent the Bible. So he is saying to us, we have a God, he's a stupid God. He cannot protect his book. His book is in jail and it's corrupt. This is how they shoot at themselves. Then they come to you and they said, how do you accept the book of John if it's written 60 years after Jesus? 
but yet they have no books until now of Muhammad and they have no books until now of Uthman and they have no books until now of Sahih al-Bukhari and they have no books until now of Sahih Muslim so what do you have what do you have nothing nothing and then we go and we search in the books of history we will find no earlier history report a guy his name is Muhammad nothing there's no history everything in this cult is based on guess as an example the Kaaba this black room which the Muslims go around it like ants without knowing why I mean why why uh, Allah have a house why Allah have a house what is that exactly Allah has a house and all of you you have to come to my house do Allah live there no so what do you mean Allah has a house Abraham he built this house if there is any proof no proof who need a proof Adam was built this house is there a proof Adam he built the house Adam according to Muslims Allah he sent him down anyone remember where when first time Adam he was sent down from heaven according to Islam who remember anyone want to help me where when Adam uh, landed in the parachute Sri Lanka thank you Sri Lanka and this is a clear evidence that Islam wrote a routed into Indian it is coming from the Hindu belief this is why if you look at those people those people who they are wearing white the men all the men they are uncovering their shoulders I don't know if you can notice that in the picture let us zoom in a little bit so maybe you can you can notice with me how those people they are uncovering their shoulder do you notice do you see it do you see how the men their right shoulder is uncovered so they are wearing no clothes this is what the Hindus wear if you go to the Hindu especially the priest you will see that this is a Hindu clothes Adam for the Muslims first landed was in India did you ask yourself why in India I mean why why if the Kaaba is the house of Allah yet Allah he landed Adam in India and then the Hindu they have a black stone they do And it is a sexual stone. The same as the black stone was a sexual stone. Anyone knows where Eve was landed? Who remember Eve, where Eve was landed? In Yemen in Yemen all right so look at this you put the map so you guys can notice with me Adam he landed here in Sri Lanka Yemen, uh, sorry, Eve landed here. Mecca is here. Adam, Allah, he ordered him to do Hajj. So he have to walk over the sea from Sri Lanka because Sri Lanka is an island. He walk over the sea and then he crossed. Because at that time, there's no ships. This is a guy. This is the first man in this earth. So don't tell me he took an airplane, took a Boeing 777. May Allah take you. So 
when this Adam he wanted to cross the sea according to the legions of Islam which is a belief for them hmm? this is Sri Lanka how Adam he was able to come to the mainland from Sri Lanka Adam he walked over the water obviously and then he went all the way to India and then he have to cross India and go all the way through India which you know in the old days India was not uh, there's nothing it's called Pakistan Pakistan is a new country occupied by the Muslim Abdul this is the land of India there's nothing it's called Pakistan uh, so as we see here with, with us let us zoom in a little bit Adam Allah he ordered him to do Hajj so he have to go and travel from here such an idiot trip all the way going through Iraq going to Saudi Arabia going to blah 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 bingo arrived to Mecca what is the logic behind this stupidity and when he arrived to Mecca he found 40,000 angels waiting for him and they said to him Adam we did Hajj 2,000 years before you we did Hajj 2,000 years before you so how the Muslim they say that Allah he ordered Adam to build the Kaaba if the Hajj was there 2,000 years before him stupidity let it go and then the Muslims they claim that when the flood of Noah happened Allah he hided the black stone in the mount of Abu Qubayt which is a small mount close to Mecca let us zoom in so we can show you Abu Qubayt it's a small town, you know, small a small mount. It's not like a really, really a real mountain. It's a, you know, uh, let us see if we can find it in the map. It should be here in the back. Uh, let me find it easier way so you can see a picture All right, that's better. Now in the pictures, we can see it better. Uh, this is very small picture. We need something bigger. Hold on, give me a second. all the pictures I got until now they are kind of small and not really clear um, well look like we have no choice we will use this one so this is the Kaaba behind the Kaaba there's a little mount. It's not a. It's not a mountain. We cannot call it mountain. It's like a, a high hill. This is called Abu Qubais. According to the Islamic resource, when Allah He made the flood of Noah, He ordered the mount of Abu Qubais to swallow the black stone which is in the side of the Kaaba. 
and when the flood of Noah is over Abu Qubais he spit out the black stone and those things happen always in the Middle East by the way yeah my dad he used to own many mounts like those they, they swallow stones and then they spit them out true story so the Muslims always they have their own legions and it is religion for them Islam is not really a religion it is a bunch of collection of legions of Arab around or the Arab people and before them and the Indian you know someone might say you say that uh, Islam roots is from India India is far away you are mistaken my friend India is so close India is extremely close let us show you. Look how close India is. This is the Arabian Peninsula. Let me show you how close the spot between them. Like now you have something, it's called Arab Emirate, right? But Arab Emirate, this is a new country. This is a new country. Maybe some of you is older than the country itself. Qatar and Emirat is a new country. 50 years ago, there's no, there's no Emirat and there's no Qatar. This is all as Arabian Peninsula. Look how close India to the Arabian Peninsula. Do you see how close it is? This is Pakistan today, which is India, and this is the Arabian Peninsula. Do you see how close? Very close. And actually, if you move here to this island, then you can come from here to here too. The, the, the land is very close. This is Iran. This is Pakistan. And Pakistan is India. And Iran, by the way, it was not like it's not what don't don't look at countries how they are made today. This is today, supposedly, right? This is today. Those countries are not really exist the way they are today. This is Karachi, Pakistan. Hmm? See how close? Very close. If you go and look how the the one they call them Arab and supposed to am an Arab You will find that those Arab their look is totally different from each other But generally speaking those who live in the Arabian Peninsula They look exactly like Indian from Pakistan And we are not exaggerating. Is that an Indian Pakistani guy for you or not? Be honest. The same hair, the same mustache, the same features, the same skin. It is a Pakistani guy. Islam is routed or rooted into India, but usually I don't go and talk about this because You know, I I fight Islam as it is today and but if we want to go like in uh, in deep and details Then we can go and see where is this this uh, this cult is coming from first of all There's a mistake many people think or believe That there is something is called Arab people. There's nothing is called Arab people Arab are not an ethnic Arab is a word in Aramaic, which means the desert. So you are an Arab man, you are a desert man, as simple as that. So for the Aramaic, if you are a person who live in Nevada, you are an Arab man. There's nothing called Arab as ethnic. And in the world today, whoever speak Arabic, they call him Arab. Which is funny.
Now we go back to Islam. They believe. There is no Quran, there is no Sahih al-Bukhari, there is no Sahih Muslim, so what the Muslims have? Nothing. Nothing. Now, if you are a Muslim sheikh and you like me to call you, please pause for me your Skype and I will call you. If there is any Muslim here, he claimed to be a shaky sheikh, who he can shake the world with knowledge. Any brave Muslim, he is a knowledgeable person, he there to explain to us what's going on. Anyone? Any Abdul? No, Abdul. No problem. So all this article is just to say to us, there is no Bukhari. However, brother, Sahih al-Bukhari was heard by 90,000 men. 90,000 men, they heard al-Bukhari. Are you, what a big fat liar. Why? He was talking in YouTube. How a person, he was talking to 90,000 people, how they can even hear him. I mean, look how they try to prove to us that there's a guy, his name is Al-Bukhari, and he was real. Brother, Sahih Al-Bukhari, brother, was heard by 90,000 men. How that can happen? Al-Bukhari, he, he have 90,000 people listening and sitting down, and he was finishing recitation of all the books in front of them. A guy, his name is Muhammad Al Buzazi. Sound like sound like a Moroccan. Let us find Muhammad Al Buzazi. Feel free to call me Muhammad Al Buzazi. We send you high already. <clears throat> this is how you prove to me that Al Bukhari was real. 90,000 people listen to him. Why? You were, you were there too? Hello. 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 Yeah, this is the kid. This is stupid. Guys, if somebody want to call me, check him out. Let him let him post for us in Facebook. Not a kid. This is a this is a stupid kid. Don't send me and uh, somebody want to call me just because you want to call me. Let him post in his Facebook. I want to call a Christian prince and give you the link. We check who is he, not that just a kid want to talk to me. All right, don't do that. And some they are saying they cannot find my Skype name uh, because I change it. Even better. I don't want to talk to a bunch of kids. So when somebody want to talk to me, go to your Facebook, post there, I challenge your Christian prince, give us the link for your Facebook, we'll check it out, and post your Skype, and I will call you. They have no Bukhari. They have no Bukhari, they have no Sahih Muslim, they have no Quran, they have nothing. Stories is coming from everywhere, from here, from there, collection. Some, you know, if you go in the Quran, you will find the stories coming from where. Zul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great, became a prophet of Allah. Have you ever heard an idiot like this? 
Muhammad he claimed to be a prophet, but yet he made Zul Qurnayn, who is a bisexual, a prophet of Allah. As simple as that. The Seven Sleepers, it's a fiction story written by a Christian priest about the Christian being discriminated. Muhammad, he took it, he put it in the Quran. The story of Solomon and the flying carpet and the ring of Solomon and the staff of, I mean, all those stories is taken from different religion. The Jews believe that Suleiman, he have a ring. And this is, you can find in the stupid books of the Jews. The Jews, they have many stupid books. But they are legions. They are not a holy book. They are legions. Muhammad, he like it. He put it in his Quran. Suleiman was walking in the valley of the ants and he heard an ant saying to the ants get in before Suleiman he crush you this is from one from the legion of the Jews this is a story the Jews did tell us to their children about Suleiman before they go to sleep Muhammad he heard it he liked it he made the Quran Zul Qurnayn, he found the sun sitting in murky water. Muhammad, he liked it, he took it, he put it in the Quran, and that's why he got himself busted. Muhammad is like a guy, you see him maybe in the weekend, or like before you throw your garbage, you will see a guy who is looking for a cycle, going around and opening your trash uh, 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 garbage uh, uh, container, looking for some uh, recycle. So Muhammad is the guy who do recycle. He take the story he put in his book and he claimed that this is his own. Zul Qurnayn, he found where the sun set. Muhammad now being smart, he copied the story as it is and he got himself busted. And the Muslims in order to cover to, to cover the, 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 the stupidity of the Quran, they start fabricating stories saying, oh, the prophet, he was not saying uh, the Quran was not saying that he found the sun sitting in murky water. No, 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 no. This is how it appeared to this guy. Don't don't be a liar. The one is talking here is Allah. This is number one. They will ask thee about Zul Qurnayn. And imagine Muhammad, he do not even know the name of the guy. He called him Zul Qurnayn. He called him Zul Qurnayn. Why do Muslims say that Adam and Eve was cast? Of heaven when they were created on earth no the Muslims don't believe that Adam and Eve created an earth this is your Christian belief don't mix this is the problem we as a Christians you see Muhammad he stole names and you right away in your mind you think those names mean the same thing Adam and Eve in Islam they were not created in earth once I debated with the Sheikh he's from Mecca the idiot <laughs> he started laughing at me he said well, Adam and Eve, they were created in the in the heaven, in earth. He said to her, he said to him, "You are a certified donkey with long beard, because now everybody will laugh at you." After we finished the debate, this was in Arabic many years ago. After we finished the debate, the guy he went and he reported my video to so take it down, because everybody started laughing at him. You are a sheikh who do not know where Adam and Eve uh, they are created. Adam and Eve in Islam, they were created in heaven, not on earth. All right? The Garden of Eden in Islam is not, you see, that even that Muhammad, he copied it from, from, from other books. So you will find that Muhammad, he promised the Muslims the Garden of Eden. But what Garden of Eden, idiot? What Garden of Eden? How Garden of Eden is going to be heaven of Islam if Garden of Eden is supposed to be in earth? And the earth will be destroyed chapter 9 verse number 72 chapter 13 verse number 23 chapter 16 verse number 31 chapter 18 verse number 31 chapter 19 61 to 20 to 76 uh, 35 33 38 50 48 i mean it's all over what do you mean you will give them the garden of edens isn't you who says the earth will this will be demolished
so when you when you try to study Islam you will find yourself like in a spinning machine where nothing match and nothing fit I mean this is chip it what Garden of Eden isn't it the Quran says is going to be the earth will be destroyed so the Garden of Eden is going to be in earth where is going to be and look at the uh, 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 you know always when somebody is a fool the more he talk the more you get him busted the heaven of Allah where Allah is located now where it is located according to Muslims who will answer me if there's any Muslim want to tell me where is the heaven of Allah if there's any Muslim want to tell us <clears throat> What is the heaven of Allah? They say to you, as long as there is no uh, Abdul to answer, maybe they do not know. The heaven of Allah is above the seven heaven in the sky. But look what Muhammad he found in the heaven of Allah. He found in the heaven of Allah the Euphrates River and the Nile River. How Allah in the seven heaven, but yet there is Euphrates and Nile River. Hmm? Sihan and Jihan, Euphrates and Nile, all among the rivers of paradise. Do you see it? I'm not making things up. Muhammad, he went to the seven heaven in the top of a flying mule who have no wings. And Muhammad, he come to us to make a Discovery Channel program. He went in an adventure and he came back to us with Discovery that Sihan and Jihan and Euphrates and the Nile River are in the heaven of Allah. Where they are coming from, who remember? Anyone remember? Where those rivers are coming from? Nobody remember? Let us see who a few is... Uh, is doing uh, yeah from Jannah we know from Jannah heaven yeah we, we know that but where 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 they're coming from where the spring of waters of those rivers coming from who remember from under the tree from under the tree in the heaven of Allah there is a tree the tree you can walk underneath of it for 100 year And next to that tree, and that tree, by the way, is uh, is like the airport. It's like what an airport. So if you go to heaven, how many of you uh, uh, watch uh, Alice in the Wonderland? Anyone watch it? It's like for kids. But it's perfectly for Islam. There's a tree. It's called, uh, 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 or let us say the, the 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 location of it is Sudrat al-Muntaha. It's where that's it. This is the borders with Allah. And there is a tree there where everyone who will go will go to heaven he have to come from the roots of that tree let me see if i can find you some reference yeah you see here we go look when muhammad he went to heaven where his journey ended sudrat al-muntaha this is this is the airport of allah it is the root of that tree and here you will see that when the Messenger of Allah was taken to the night journey, he came to Surat Al-Muntaha. Let us highlight. Which is in the sixth heaven. That's it. In the seventh heaven is Allah. That's it. You cannot go farther. You know, even the angels cannot go farther. That is where everything that comes up and the from below ends. And where everything that comes down from above until it is taken from it when 
when what covered the lotus tree anyone understand thing me myself I don't understand a thing I mean this is stupid and what 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 does that mean eh, just let it go so there's a tree there and this is exactly where Muhammad he come from so uh, to, to make it simple let us make a drawing you know I'm very good in art as you know I, I think all of you you have to admit uh, <clears throat> Are you a Muslim? The one is calling me. Why are you are calling me? Are you a Muslim? Uh, no, don't call me if you are a Muslim. I will block you, please. Don't call me unless you are a Muslim. And you have to be a Muslim, like not just a Muslim. You have to be a Muslim who knows. Now look at this. This is the tree. It's a huge tree. Big tree. Big. 100 years you can walk underneath of it. Big, brother. Big. So this is like a 100 year you go. Now here under the roots of the tree, there is four rivers. And they are Sihan and Jihan and the Nile River. When somebody go to the heaven of Allah, he go from under the roots like here there's like an open hole and this is where you go from earth you go up you go up you go up and bingo you are here you are in the heaven so you arrive in Sudrat al Muntaha and you are under the lotus tree and this is where all the prophets of Allah they do land now the tree this tree have leaves bigger than the, the ears of elephants and they are made of gold and some they say silver let us see if we can find some reference just to uh, ignite your imagination so you can have a nice fiction dream when you go to bed uh, uh, let us see <clears throat> Hmm. Let us see if we can describe for you. Uh, look at this hmm. as an example. I heard the message of Allah. S A W S. This is like you know, uh, like a captain, uh, Captain Hawk. Uh, while mentioning a lot of, the lot of tree of the utmost boundary, saying, "A rider will travel in the shade of one, or this like the, the shade of one branch for a hundred years." Do, do you see it? So this is a very big tree, very big, huge, huge brother, very big. 100 years you go under one branch, not the whole tree, just a branch. And by the way, this is a true story. My grandfather, he used to have a tree. You walk underneath a fit for 300 years, just under the branch too. Okay. And then you travel in the shade of one of the branches for 100 years. Or hundred rides, they are not sure. Hundred years of yard, we will seek the shade themselves, which the say, shade of I uh, in uh, narrators Yahya was adopt about the, the uh, and and the and the 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 butterfly of those uh, of this tree, it was made from gold, like it's a, a, a have a fruit like a butterfly, and it is made of gold. Hmm? Another hadith. While I was traveling through the paradise, a river appeared before me, whose banks had a tent of pearls. 
I said to the angel, what is this? He said, this is our Kawthar, which is Allah mentioned in the Quran. There's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the Kawthar, which is about the, about the penis of Muhammad, which Allah has granted you. You remember the guy, he said to Muhammad, ah, 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 your penis is not working, you cannot have kids. So Allah, he made a verse for him saying, ah, 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 it's your penis who don't work. <laughs> what a cult. Then he says, uh, then he put his hand on the clay and removed the musk from it. I was raised to Sudrat al-Muntaha and I saw a magnificent light at it. No comment. What is that light? You don't ask the Muslims. If you ask the Muslim, what is that light? They do not know. Just shut up. If there's any Muslim can tell us the light he saw in the in the in the tree is what? This is the tree. All right. It was narrated, blah 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 blah. That when that which cover covered the lot of tree, Al Quran, i.e. sixteen. He, the narrator, says it was a gold mouth. He, the narrator, further said the message of Allah was given three things. He was given five prayer. B was given uh, concluding verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Where is the rest of the five? <laughs> Look here, it says, he was given three players, but he was given five prayers. Which one of them? Mm. Anyway, he was given the three, the, the 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 five prayers, and he was given the closing of the Quran, which is uh, uh, another story. Hold on. Hmm. Here, this hadith, by the way, is important. If a Muslim he will say to you that ever Muhammad he met with his God, uh, uh, this hadith confirmed that Muhammad he never met with his God. Let me pause the hadith for you. So, if you want to save it, Muhammad he saw only Jibreel. They asked Muhammad, uh, Aisha if she if Muhammad he saw her his, his Lord. If you saw Allah, she said, you have said something that's make my hair stand uh, on end. I said, take it easy. Then I recited, indeed, he saw the great signs of his Lord. So she said, what, what do you mean by that? Uh, he said, by, my, by that I mean Jibra'il. Who never informed you that Muhammad, he saw his Lord, that uh, he is lying. He is saying something not true. But he saw the angel Jibreel twice. Once uh, with the 600 wings. Whoever says that to you that he saw Allah, he is fabricating that. And then he's, he has fabricated the worst lie. Rather, he saw Jibreel, but he did not see him in real image except two times. One time in Sadrat al Muntaha and one time in the Jade he, when he came in the horizon. So, Muhammad he saw Jibreel only twice, supposedly in his real image. Uh, somebody saying that this is a da'if grade. Uh, uh, Abdul, da'if grade means it's accepted, in case you do not know. When a Muslim he says to you, da'if grade, Da'if, it's mean it's accepted, it's good. You know, the Muslims are, by, by the way, it's like a bunch of kids. They learn the word, Da'if, Da'if. They, they think when you say Da'if, it is, it's bad. No, Da'if, it, it's not bad. Da'if is accepted. This is why it's called Da'if. It's mean it has a rank, which means it cannot be proven to be 1 million percent correct and cannot be disapproved too. This is why it's called Da'if. It's not rejected. There's a video made by Sheikh Hamza. He explained to you what the if mean, and he said to the Abdul, to the stupid Abdul, he said to them, "The one who says the if hadith, this is a weak argument. 
Da'if hadith did not funk. It passed. It passed. <laughs> it did not funk. It passed. So any say anything you said to the Muslim, they say to you, Da'if. I agree, Islam is Da'if. Islam is weak. So what do you mean? You Muslims are lying about your prophet and you write this in your book and you say the prophet says no, but the, but the prophet never says no. Thank you very much. This is why I'm saying that all of your Islamic resource is a, is a garbage. And the proof is you Muslims. You are the one, the first one who deny what is written in your books, which is the only source you have about Islam. The only source about Islam, the Muslim, they say to you, Daif, we don't like it. So what do you have? Nothing. You have nothing. Let me show you something not daif. Is that okay if I show you something not daif? Brother? Something not daif. Let us see what you will say. Brother, the prophet said that the sun Sit in the murky water. Da -da 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 not daif. What we will do now? What we will do now? The sun sit in murky water, brother. Hello. Do you agree with your prophet that the sun swim every day in the, in the murky water? This is not daif. What do you say, brother? Or what about this hadith, brother? Let us go to this hadith. Brother, is this one daif, brother? Hello? Your prophet is the genius doctor. Now we know what happened in the bedroom of your father and my father. If you are a boy, obviously your father have orgasm first. If you are a girl, obviously your mother, she have an orgasm first. Brother, this is not Daif. What we will do now? Say Daif, say Daif. Well, the the if here is your prophet. Your prophet, he need to go to school. He is, he's fabricating lies, but none of them is working. It is not orgasm, guys. It's not orgasm. The Muslim Abdul saying this is not orgasm. Look what look 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 at this. Uh, I mean, look at the Muslims trying to defend Muhammad. Look, the Messenger of Allah said, the man water is thick and white. What is that water? What is the water which make babies? Let us make an options. Is the one come from your nose when you have cold? Is that the one who come from your mouth when you want to spit? Or this is the one when you come from your penis? Abdul, pick up an answer, please. Abdul, you just said this is not orgasm, brother. So what it is, brother? Is that the liquid come from your nose, brother? Or this is the liquid come from your mouth when you spit, brother? Or this is a liquid come from your private part, brother, when you have orgasm, brother? I'm trying to learn from you, brother. So Muhammad is a genius. He is the one who knows how the baby is made. And he is right
What you want to say? You want to say Daif? Say Daif. Come on, man. Trust me, in a few years from now, this website will take the Sahih and they will put Daif. Just wait. Hmm? Or what about the sperm, brother? How long does sperm live inside the, the, the woman? Muhammad is the one who have knowledge. We learn from Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad. According to Muhammad, brother, the, the sperm stay inside the women alive, having fun, going from parking to parking spot for 50 days. But look here, Muhammad is very honest. Look. 40 or 50 days he is not really sure i mean but depend 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 on the father hmm? 50 days sperm inside the women where she is going to hawaii the sperm is in the beach now according to science the maximum days of a sperm to live is five days uh, your muhammad just added one zero i mean he's almost close Guys, imagine if Muhammad, he says, the sperm stay alive in the women for five days. The Muslims, they will make a movie about this scientific discovery. Look, look, the Muslim is worried about how old are you? He is not worried about how old the sperm of his prophet is. He is worried about how old are you, CB? ZB, how old are you, ZB? He is not worried about the disasters we see from his false prophet. He is worried about how old are you, ZB? Hmm. Fifty days. Now is that the Eve of brother? No, brother. This is Sahih Muslim, brother. This is not the Eve. What we will do now? Hmm? Don't change the topic, uh, Road. Don't change the topic. And no, the Catholic Church did not in, uh, 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 create Islam. The Catholic Church, they are the first to fight Islam. That's a lie. But change my. Don't change my topic. Anyone will pull something out of my topic. We will. We will. Uh, we will put you out for a sleep. Any Abdul? Brother, according to your prophet, the final shape is male or female, brother. The last thing, brother, in the creation, but according to science, your gender is determined right away when the sperm get in the egg. According to your prophet, the last thing is male or female. A brother, and then according to your prophet, the drop of semen will turn into a, a dead blood. Have you ever heard of a semen turn into a, de a blood, a dead blood, a clot? Mm. Any Abdul? What is that? What? Hello? Wisdom. They ask Z about Zulkarnain. You see, a Jewish guy, he asked Muhammad, Hey Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad, Khabibi Muhammad, tell us about Zulkarnain Muhammad. Muhammad, he went home. Uh oh. If I don't answer them, they will say his God is not real. I have to give them an answer. And then Muhammad, he got the answer. There's many stories about Zulkarnain. Anyone knows why he's called Zul uh, the man with the two horns according to Islam? Anyone knows? Zulqurnayn, which means the man with the two horn. Zu in Arabic mean like the one who have something. al qurnain is the, the two horn. So imagine Allah, he don't even know the name of the guy. He called him by the guy with the two horn. Why? He was a cow. What is, who is this guy? The guy with the two horn. Is he a cow? Is he an ox? 
You call him the guy with the two horn. He don't have a name. Anyway, let it go. According to Muslims, brother, the man with the two horn, which is Zul Qurnain, he was given that name because of the following. He came to his people and he invited them to say Shahada. They did beat him in his head with the hammer. Boing! And he got the first horn and he died. Allah, brother, resurrected him from death. And he sent him back to his people again. And then they did hit him in his head for the second time. Boing! And this is how he got the second horn. And obviously the story, the story is a true story. Think about it. Don't you see cartoon? They hit you in your head in the cartoon and right away there's something coming in your head. Here we go. True story. And this is how he got the name, the guy with the two horn. He have two boing, boing, boing. Now he have two boings in his head. Why is scholars, Muslims only allowed to talk? Who is holding you from talking? Talk. Aren't you? I mean, people are weird. So they are asking you about Zulkarnain. I will tell you some information about him. Lou, we have made him strong. Allah made us. Allah, he made Alexander the Great strong. Even the victory of Zulkarnain is from Allah. He's a prophet of Allah. And we gave him everything a road. What does that mean? We opened roads for him. And he followed the road, which means Allah, he guide him to go in that direction. Till, brother, till he, when he reached the sitting place of the sun. Here, the Muslim, they start lying to you and says, oh, 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 here, he found the sun sitting in murky water. This is how it appeared to him. Read carefully. It is the one is talking still is Allah, not the Quran. Till when he reached the sitting place of the sun, it's not the, the guy with the two horns saying, Till I reach. It is Allah talking. Till when he reached the sitting place of the sun. So Allah claimed that there is a place where the sun set. Isn't it obvious, guys? Isn't it obvious? And he is reporting where he found that. And not only that, he found that sitting in murky water and he found next to it people saying, uh, living there. So the Muslims, in order to cover this disaster, they say, oh, brother, this is reporting that how things appear to Zulkarnain, brother. But this is not Zulkarnain talking. It is Allah talking. And here you notice how, how you can explain to me where it says, and till he, till what? Till he reach sitting place of the sun. How you can reach that? Who is the one who's talking? Allah. I do not need to go anywhere to find the, the sun sitting place. The sun sit in my place. Next to my window. Hmm? So isn't it obvious that this guy who made this book is an idiot? And then when the Muslims they try to defend by the help of a prophet Muhammad peace upon him He got the Abdul busted. If you go and see how many articles the Muslims they say they made to explain to you, no, 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 the brother, the sun does not sit in murky water. <laughs> the Quran doesn't say that, the brother. It was how it appeared to the Gurkainini, brother. It looked like this is how it appeared to your prophet. <laughs> Do you see it, brother? And look here, guys. Muhammad is like a, he, he cannot he cannot he cannot keep his mouth shut. He is like, I am, I am smart, and I am no I know it. Like you know the song, like I'm sexy and I know it. 
Muhammad he cannot like he, he feel that he is the smartest between his people because now he have the guidance of Allah he want to explain the Quran to them they are idiot I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah look how romantic I mean look at this in front of you you are in the top of a donkey and in front of you the prophet of Allah himself the walking talking library of Allah dr. Muhammad himself I was sitting behind the message of Allah why even I'm using blue in this case we cannot use blue haram we have to use red I mean what's wrong with you you use a blue with the prophet red brother he like red even they accuse him of stealing red underwear I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey while the Sun was sitting what a romantic story I was expecting after that the Prophet he says to the guy do you love me do you do you do you love me do you do you and the and the guy he was saying to him yes I do for I sure I do I love you all of us we love you brother Prophet but look at this the prophet he asked unexpected question this is how the prophet he surprised you always he is an expected guy he is full of surprises and adventures he asked do you do you know where this set the guy behind the prophet his head now is spinning <laughs> trying to answer and then he gave up as usual, I replied. Allah and his apostles knows best. Like here, the guy, he admit, I mean, come on, who am I prophet to teach you? Hello? You and Allah knows best. You speak for Allah, and for sure you and Allah, they are partner in knowledge. <sighs> he said, and now the wisdom is coming are you ready he said it's set in a spring of warm water Hamia. mean now I got a boing in my head boing here you see the impact of knowledge the impact of a prophethood, the impact of a prophet who knows, who watch, nobody knows. And then the Muslims, they made articles saying, hey brother, the Quran does not say the sunset in murky water, brother. It was how it appeared to the guy, brother. Hmm. Any Muslim have an objection? Any sheikh he dare to call me? Who is here a Muslim sheikh? He have the courage and the knowledge. If you are a Muslim sheikh, post in your Facebook page, please. I am sheikh. For sure, we will see your your page. You know, uh, we will recognize you right away, and I will be honored to call you, and let us have a hot. Hamia water debate. Don't you want to have a hot Hamia water debate? Hamia, Hamia mean hot. Hmm? Hello? It's me you're looking for. You are listening to me as never before. For sure, I want to convert to Islam today and even before. Hello, who can help us to understand how the Prophet approved one night stand to have sex with the women for the sake of money? Hello, I mean. Islam is fantastic. I am really convinced. Science, love, harmony, brother. There's a guy, he made a video. I don't know if you heard of it. 
he is teaching the people how to beat his wife and he is saying to them brother this is the correct way to beat your wife I cannot wait to get married to practice it brother I cannot wait this is how you beat your wife <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh. so do we have any uh, any scholar would like to debate us please hmm? now the prophet his knowledge about astronomy and uh, I mean it's beyond imagination uh, you know as an example why the birds are not falling down in the ground anyone knows why the bird they they they, they can fly anyone knows allah he hold them up absolutely Chapter 16, verse number 79, chapter 67, verse 19. Nothing holding the birds from falling down except because of Allah is holding them. Mm -hmm. This is true. And this is what happened exactly with 737, the one who fell and uh, cr crashes. And uh, brother, many people die because Allah did not hold it up. Allah hold all the plane except that one. Muhammad now is teaching you physics, science. What is holding the birds from falling down? Allah. It's Allah is holding the birds. Okay, what about the F-35 and the F-16? Who is holding it? Allah. Allah. What do you do if I live 1400 years ago? Uh, brother, I will join the company of the Prophet so we can get the blonde diggers, brother. Do you remember when the Prophet he says attack the Romans so we can get the blonde diggers? Hello, brother. We will attack the Roman brother so we can get the blonde diggers. Hmm. Any Muslim have anything to say? Anyone? Who is a Muslim? He have an objection. We have 1,000 people watching, and yet we have only 590 dislike and 24 dislike. I'm really disappointed. Muslims, I mean, are you saying you don't dislike my videos? Are you insulting me? Please, Muslims, give it dislike. I mean, make me feel better. For the, for the sake of the shin of Allah. Have you ever heard of a God? He have a shin. Why? And Allah in the judgment day is going to expose his shin. What is it? What is a scare in the hell of me is his shin. What if he left up the skirt up more and we saw something more? Allah has a shin. Please, Muslims, I mean, come on. 24, uh, 24 dislike only. I'm not complaining about the Christian don't give a like because Christian don't give like any, anyway, anyway. Christians are here for party. It's a comedy stand alone show but for me it's not for me it's a mission we save people here there's tons of people they will leave the cult when they watch my videos guaranteed any abdul yeah sure you can dislike it it's a freedom of speech brother actually if you are a muslim and you want to get reward do this Give my video like and then dislike and this is how Allah will double your reward. 
because by liking it you convert to Christianity and by this liking you left Christianity and that Allah will do this is the best way to like earn more money you lose one coin but then you gain two I'm just telling you a trick I can show you the hadith by the way all is based on the hadith don't you know the Muslim who's who, who threatened me that he is going to burn all my books and since that day I'm waiting for it he said I swear by Allah Christian Prince I will buy all your books and burn them and since then I remember no one except Bernie Sander I say burn me burn me brother burn me and I don't know like he's not I, I was saying to myself okay tomorrow I will wake up and I will find like a 10 million order in Amazon and the Muslims will burn my book and then I went to YouTube to see Muslims burning my book. I saw I found only Bernie Sanders saying we have to stop waging war and drugs. I mean, have you ever heard of stupid people like this? This guy he wanna stop war and drugs. He wanna he, he want everybody in America to be high. <laughs> hi, hi, what's your name? Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm high. <laughs> we are American following Bernie Sanders. We are high. <laughs> Welcome to America. You feel like you're in Afghanistan. Everybody is high. Any Abdul? Okay, let us do this. Who is a Muslim willing to give us a question, even in text, if you are not uh, able to give it to me by voice? By the way, you can leave a voice message for me in Skype. Any Muslim have something to say? Who is a Muslim want to give us something to refute? Any Muslim? Who want to give me something? Answer me cowardly. Why are you blocking? We Muslims are you scared? If uh, uh, fee, uh, if we are blocking you, how you can text you idiot? <laughs> I mean, look at, but brother, why you are blacking the Muslims? Are you scared? Are you a Muslim? And you are typing since two hours, and you keep calling me names. Hello. You keep calling me coward. You keep calling me names, and I did not block you. So why you are lying, brother? Why you are blacking us? Huh? Why are you are blacking us? Allah is blacking you. Look, look what the Quran says. It's not me who blocked you, it's Allah blocked you. Let me show you the verse. Shall, shall we? Eh. Here we go. It is not me who slay you, it was Allah who slay them. It is not you who throw, it was Allah who throw at them. Do you see it? Everything, brother, in the hand of Allah. If you ever being blocked, brother, oh, you don't see the screen? Oh, Allah block it. Here we go. It's not me, brother. It is Allah. Any Abdul? Who is a Muslim have a good argument? Who is a Muslim he have something? I mean, look, you know, we, we showed in, in less than two hours tons of lies from Muhammad, and obviously they are lies. You cannot, you cannot deny them. But can we find something truthful in Muhammad teaching? Can we find one true story in Muhammad teaching? There's Abdul asking me for a Skype ID. No, no, he posted in his Skype and he can post the link for us here. He can post his Skype name. We check it out. We see that the challenge for me and I will contact him. Post in your Skype, Abdul. You post in your Skype. All right. You post in your Skype. 
and everybody knows my Skype. You can post in my Skype. Post in my Skype if you want. Hmm? Christian Prince, I challenge you. I am Sheikh uh, Shakuka. And this is my Skype, and I will call you. We just want to verify that you are a person who is not a kid. Somebody he can claim knowledge, like a beard, and grow a beard before you text me. The bigger your beard, the more you are welcome. Once you promise to explain Quran chapter 68, verse number 13. Sure, sure, we can do that. But brother, don't you know that nobody can explain the Quran save Allah? The Quran, Allah says that. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a God? He says nobody understand his book save Allah, save him. So why you send the book? I mean, I cannot really understand this madness in this religion. Why you send us a book where nobody understand it save you? What about you keep it for yourself? All right. The, the person who asked me to explain uh, chapter 68, what verse you wanted? What verse he wanted? Uh, 13. 13. Okay. Why you want to explain this one? This this one will drive the Muslim Abdullah crazy. I mean, this is not even fair. <laughs> حماز مشاء بنميم مناع الخير معتد أثيم عطل بعد ذلك ذنيم I mean that's me 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 brother if I explain to you this verse do you promise me you will not hit your head in the wall do you promise me you will not do harm yourself <laughs> who is a Muslim who is willing to explain this verse to this uh, gentleman there he's asking about your prophet uh, saying something here a greedy they're wild inter intrusive what do you think uh, Muslims simply supposedly this verse here or those all those verses Allah saying to Muhammad don't obey those who they are saying to you you are a liar and here you ask yourself why even Muhammad making such a verse saying that Allah said to him don't obey those who they are saying to him you are a liar they want you they want you to compromise and they will compromise uh, neither obey uh, those who uh, you know make oath like I will do this and I will do that if you do this uh, you know so here what you see that Muhammad saying that Allah told me not to obey and not to follow and not to accept and not to compromise the bad person the the one who cheap the one who don't uh, uh, give the one uh, uh, you know uh, uh, let us say uh, who insult me uh, the one who says to me that you are a liar um, all of those and you know like uh, the story about uh, the verse you are talking about there is a guy, his name is Al Walid ibn Mughira. Uh, and suddenly his name appeared in the Quran. A person who is supposedly he is very uh, tough, uh, he is very hard. Uh, he is obviously uh, uh, rejecting Muhammad. But later we find that this Ibn Mughira, you know. As I know, he accepted Islam. As some Muslims, they say. If you remember the story where Muhammad, he bowed down to the uh, idols. He bowed down to the three daughters of Allah. Everybody bowed down, except Al-Walid ibn Mughira. And look like Muhammad, uh, he have a pain from this guy so when when everybody bow down Ibn al Mughira he did not bow down because he is not a, supposedly worshipping the three daughters of Allah but because supposedly uh, he could not bow down so he grabbed some sand or something and he put it in his forehead but 
the Muslims, when they explain this verse, you will find that every chapter, every uh, uh, interpretation is given different meaning. And to be honest with you, I do not know which one to for me to, to quote for you. If you go to Ibn Kathir, it's different from Al-Jalalain, it's different from Al-Tabari, it's different from everybody. But this one confirmed to us one clear thing, that Muhammad is a false prophet because he predicted that this person will be a bad person for him. And according to many, this person later he became a Muslim. Because here it says that he is a, a kafir who is really, uh, as it says there, intrusive, like he is very evil in a kafir. You know? But anyway, the Muslims themselves don't agree about anything. And that's why I said, if I want to explain to you this verse, how I can explain it to you if the Muslims themselves, they do not know what this verse is about. I hope you are not disappointed with my statement because I don't know really what to say. You can go open Ibn Kathir and then open a Jalalain and then open Al Qurtubi and the Tabari, and you will find they come to this agreement about what this verse means. Everybody has have his own. They do not know. And this is additional proof that Islam is a stupid religion. Because the Quran supposedly is explained by Allah. So if the Quran is explained by Allah, why the Muslim can't explain the Quran? You know what I mean? What about we ask the Muslims here to explain this verse for us? This verse talking about who Muslims? And here you will notice that since the beginning of Islam, Muhammad, he was suffering from a problem. They keep saying to him, this is nothing but the fabulous of old men. And then if you go to verse number 16, and uh, uh, verse number 16, it says something funny. Allah uh, uh, will, will put a tattoo in his nose. I mean, isn't it, this is funny? Allah will brand this person in his nose. What is that? And then the verse after it, suddenly he jumped and he says, Lu, have we tried? We have tried them as we tried the owner of the garden. Okay, but th this th doesn't say garden. It says Jannah, the heaven. Who are they, the owner of the garden? Nobody knows. Allah, he destroyed their garden when they, they, while they were asleep. When they wake up, they found it like ashes. Who are those people? We do not know. What this is about? No, we do not know. Look at the story. I mean, read the story. Very silly, very stupid. What garden? Who are they, those people? What, what, what is this, where this heaven is located? Is that Adam and Eve? No, it cannot be Adam and Eve because those it says ashabul the, the people of the garden, which means many people. Who are they? The only the only story we knew about people live in heaven is Adam and Eve. It was only two people. Here it says they went off. They went off, not two, not three, not many. In Arabic it says Fantalahu. So if you ask me to explain something in the Quran, my friend, this is the most stupid book ever, and Muslims themselves they suffer badly. To trying to explain it. This is why the Muslims, when they explain the Quran, they say, "We the, the scholars agree about not to agree about the meaning of this verse." The scholars agree about not to agree. This is the only agreement the Muslims they have. We agree about not to agree about the meaning of this verse. So you're asking me for a mission impossible. And look here, he says to them, do you have a scriptures wherein you learn? Huh? Do you have a book? Huh? Do you have a book? Okay, what if they are a Christian? They will say, yes, we have a book. <laughs> oh, boy. And if you read in the beginning of the chapter, you will see how funny the chapter. Do you remember, we just two days ago, we read, uh, uh, actually yesterday, right? Is it yesterday? Two, uh, two uh, broadcasts ago. We spoke about the chapter noon. Anyone remember what noon is? 
Who remember what noon? I mean, I want to show you some science, but I'm afraid that you must not, you, you people might convert to Islam if you see the science of Allah. <clears throat> the Muslim website is not opening. And from his narration in the authority of Ibn Abbas that said regarding the interpretation of Allah noon, noon he says, Allah he swear by noon, which is the whale that carry the earth on its back in the water and beneath it, which is the bowl, and under the bowl, there's a rock. Actually, by the way, yesterday I was watching a video on YouTube about a guy who was doing uh, diving. And honest to Allah, I swear by Allah Shin, I saw the bowl there. You believe me, brother, or you don't believe me? It's your choice, brother. I swear by Allah, Shin, I saw the bull who was carrying the wheel. I saw a whale in the water, and underneath there is a there is a bull, and in the top of the whale there was the earth. True story. Okay, so what we discover now that Allah is swear by noon, and noon is a whale which carry the earth. On its back I'm so glad that the whale is carrying the earth on its back not between its balls otherwise we will smell like shit excuse my language it carry it in its back what if we carry it under his uh, his tail then the 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 the, the ball will will do bullshit bull on us so we are lucky that the ball is carrying uh, the whale in the top of him not underneath and the, the bull will uh, come So brother here you learn you learn brother a lot of knowledge if we ask Zakir Naik about this story Zakir Naik he will he will like he because he's a doctor Zakir Naik he have knowledge but the sister there's the person his name is the Christian prince and he always make fun of the prophet first of all that guy is ignorant it's a proven according to science and there is a scientist from Japan his name Yama I do like Yama he approved it and he discovered that really that the whale would carry in the earth and he carried it in the top of him. As an example, my name is Dr. Naik. Anyone know why my name is Dr. Naik? Because simply, my mom she gave birth to me in the top of the whale. The whale was swimming in a big bowl and the bowl was in the ocean. And then my mom she dropped me and I found that there's 4,000 cracks in the ocean. Science, brother, science. So, under the whale, there's a ball, and under the rock, and the, look, and under the ball, there's a rock. I'm so excited. I'm so happy that there is a rock under the ball. Otherwise, the ball will be flying in the space, or he will be swimming, maybe. And under the rock, there's a dust. And none knows what is under the dust, save Allah. It's like this is like 4,000 miles down the ocean. This is why we Muslim scholars, our knowledge stopped here. Thank you. Don't tell us, don't ask us anymore. That's it. After this point, we have no knowledge, brother. Our knowledge is stopped here with the 4,000 cracks in the ocean. 4,000 cracks in the ocean? I think you have 4,000 cracks in your head. <laughs> Thank you for, the, for those who make donation. God bless. We appreciate you. And then the name of the whale is Lewish, Lewish for a con. And it said its name is Lotaya, and the name of the bull Bahamut, and some they say the name of the name of it is Telahut or Liwana. The whale is in the sea, is called Edward. It's like a small ball in a huge sea. The sea is in the Hollywood Rock. Whereby there is four thousand cracks, and here notice with me, it's four thousand cracks. I mean, look how much they are into details. Like I mean, four thousand. It's not like three thousand ninety nine or nine hundred ninety nine. No, 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 four thousand cracks. Isn't it obvious that this is science? 
and from each crack, brother, water spring come out. Ahmad, Ahmad, are you talking to me? You are saying to me, are you believing yourself? Is Ahmad is a Muslim or what? I don't know. Who is a Muslim in the chat? Who is a Muslim in the chat? Don't send me files. Don't send me links in, in Skype. I don't open them. You can text me. Only if you are a Muslim. If not, please don't do that. If you are a Muslim and you have answers, very free. And you have to be like an, uh, an adult, not a kid. Hmm? Hello from Macedonia. How are you, my friend Martin? Good for you to see to be in Macedonia. I want to go to Macedonia. I want to go in the Macedonia so I can study the life of Alexander the Great, who found where the sun set in the murky water, as the Quran says, brother. Allah always have knowledge, brother. He is the one who found where the sun set. Nobody before him, he found that. A brother from Macedonia. Do the ants in Macedonia talk? Have you ever heard of an ant saying, hide, otherwise a Christian prince will crush you? Let me show you, brother. But now you will feel jealous because Middle Eastern ants they talk not like European ants I feel sorry for you chapter 27 verse number 18 and when reach the valley of ants an ant said hide otherwise Suleiman will crush you brother brother according to science brother they discovered that ants they talk Hey, Abdul, do you know that ants are deaf and mute? Ants are deaf and mute. They don't talk. In the in the Quran, it says here he was amazed with her speech. In the Quran, it says that the ant she said, and Suleiman he heard her. It was a speech. But according to science, brother, ants don't talk. They communicate, all any all creatures, they communicate. Yeah, I mean, obviously. Insects, all animals, they can communicate. But they don't talk. They are mute and they are deaf. They have no hearing. Suleiman, the only way for him to know what the ant is saying is to have the language, to know the language of the ants, and to hear the ant, as you see here, he said, so he smiled, amused with, at her speech. Wajahat Ali, he's a Muslim. Okay, Wajahat, he's a, he's a welcome. If there's anything you want to say to us, Wajahat? Any Muslim? How Suleiman, and by the way, how the ant she knew the name of Suleiman. As you see here, it says, the ant she said to the ant, Hide, otherwise Solomon will crush you. How she knew his name. How the ant she knew the name of the king. Any Muslim have an idea? So guys, when you go in the park and there's ants in between the grass, you don't see them, by the way, but obviously they are saying your name. 
Hey, hide, hide, because Heidi, she is going to crush you. Hey, hide, hide, because James is going to step on you. They knew your, our names. You can't hide your name from the ants. You walk in the park, the ants, they knew your name. You, they were reported to the police. Your name, your ID, your everything. You walk, the ants, she will say, like let's say your name is Heidi. So hide from Heidi. Don't ask them how they knew the name of Heidi. They knew it. They are smart. They are ants. That's why we call them ants. And the Muslims made an article saying that the word ant, namla, is a female ant. And according to science, they discovered that the word, uh, uh, that, uh, that only female ants is the one who do warning. Allahu Akbar, science, brother, science. Abdul. In Arabic, we don't have male ants. We call all ants namla. Hello? I mean, look how they lie. In Arabic, we call all ants namla. Any single ant, we call it namla. And that doesn't matter if it's a male or female. The word is a female, not the gender. Ah. <sighs> Anyone? By the way, I'm thinking to change my uh, 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 my Skype account because this account explode. I have like 10,000, 20,000 in it. I mean, I cannot even, uh, I cannot find anything. So I might change it soon, and get a new uh, account to use it. If you are a Christian, don't just take somebody he claimed to be a Christian prince, okay? If he don't speak to you by voice, there's no guarantee it is me. Anyone can make an account, he called it uh, Debate TV or, you know, don't fool yourself. All right? Don't trust anyone. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> I am sound tired. What you can do if you have four wives? And for mother-in-law, put yourself in my shoe. You know, first time I learned this. Put yourself in my shoe. What does that mean? Do we should go inside the shoe? I mean, English is really funny. Uh, this is why I like Quran more. Quran is make more sense. Here we go. The ant. She saw the ant. She told them, "Ants hide, otherwise Solomon is going to crush you." Very clear. Not like English. Put yourself in my shoe. I mean, this is crazy. And by the way, in case you do not know, Shakespeare, he's an Arab, and his real name is Sheikh Isber. This is what al qazafi he said. Even Shakespeare is an Arab. His name is Sheikh Isber. What do you want more? Hmm? Any Abdul? Yeah, Al Qazafi, he said that. I'm not kidding. Al Qazafi, he was making a speech in the front of the you know conference, and he says, "The Western they stole everything from us." As an example, democracy. Democracy is an Arabian word, mean democracy, which means bring the chairs. <laughs> Here we go. Democracy, it came from the Arab. We are the people of democracy. Absolutely. If you don't vote for me, I kill you. I mean, you are are you kidding me? We are the one who founded democracy. Before us, nobody knows what democracy is about. If you don't accept the prophet, he hang you, he crucify you, he cut your feet, your 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 and democracy, you know, it's your freedom of speech. We have we have a freedom of speech always, you know. We are Arab. You can go right now to any uh, Arabic country or Islamic country, say anything you want, anything, anything, just for two seconds. After that, you will become shish kebab. Democracy. Do you remember when they when they went in England and they have a sign, it says, uh, uh, Islam means peace, we behead anyone insult the Prophet. <laughs> behead anyone insult the Prophet. <laughs> Islam is peace, behead anyone insult the Prophet. <laughs> 
Oh, welcome to the heaven of Abdul. All right. Anyone? How many of you subscribe to our channel today? If you are here first time, I advise you not to subscribe because you will become addicted. Don't. Don't subscribe. You will become addicted. And then you will keep coming. And then you will start laughing. And then if you laugh, you gain weight. And I sh I'm sure most of you, especially ladies, they are trying to fight weight. Here you will gain weight because you will laugh. Any Abdul? Hmm? Once I was doing a seminar in the church. Now the guy, the, the minister in the church, he wanna he wanna prepare those Christians to what it's coming. So he said, I have to introduce you first, okay? Okay. And then he took the microphone, he started saying to them, Our brother here is different from normal Christians, like the one you hear them. So he might say things which you are not like he he wanna like he introducing them for the shocking what is coming like you know this is this is different <laughs> five minute ten minute he is explaining you can tell the guy is saying we are going to open a bomb box in the front of you <laughs> and he says to them this is like it's not an average normal ministry talk uh, something we used to. And uh, you know, and I was saying to myself, what this guy is doing? Oh my god. I mean, come on, just give me the microphone, man. They will see right away what will happen. You know, just just let it happen. <laughs> and then he gave me the microphone. And we have almost uh, supposedly they will give me the microphone for like I think it was supposedly 20 minutes, 30 minutes maximum. And then I, they will not let me go down from the stage. People they are dying from laughing, people they sweat. People are crying. People they cannot believe it. You know, in, in one of the seminars, there's a guy, he is big, and he loves so hard. And, you know, in the church, they have the plastic chairs. So he fell down, and he could not hold himself. So he opened his hands to hold himself from failing. When he opened his hands, he pushed all <laughs> the chairs with him, and they fell down. Oh, what a comedy. This is why, brother, Islam is the best. There was a guy, he was a principal of a school. They told me that this guy, they told him Islam is wonderful and he is thinking to convert to Islam. So they invited him and they told me when he come, uh, like one of them, he said, when he come, I will stand behind him to tell you that this is him. So I said, okay. Then I start talking about Islam and I, I, I showed things which is specifically because he, he cared for science. So he put his hand up and he says so you are saying this is really islam i said my friend i'm showing you your the islamic website the islamic reference and even we played for you videos i played for them videos made by muslims so what do you mean this is islam for sure this is Islam." but he said but this is not what they told me i said this is the point i'm here to tell you what they will not tell you people they can convert to islam if they do not know what Islam, which means those who convert to Islam is people who have is the last one to know what Islam is about. There is no way a person who knows what Islam is about and he will accept to convert to Islam for a second. Converting people to Islam is based on the game of deception. They deceive you, they lie to you, and then you became a victim. And this is why after two or three years of converting, most of those who convert, they leave. Because they found that this is not really what they told them in the beginning. And you know, many, many people who they are naive, they do not know really the nature of Islam. Nature of Islam is an evil cult. They are allowed to lie. So you assume that a person who is inviting you to his religion, he must be decent. He is just being honest about his religion. They are allowed to lie. They are allowed to lie in every way, in every mean. If you go to chapter 3, verse number 28, as an example, someone who might say to you, we love Christians. Even Quran says we can marry Christian women. 
Yes, they can marry Christian women to spread Islam, but Muslim women, they cannot marry Christian men because that will make the children follow their father. See how they deceive you? Read carefully with you, with me. Muslims are not allowed to take a Christians or Jews as a friends. However, anyone he take them as a friend, anyone he take them as a friend, which means he meet it, he mean it, become might and honorable in the preference to the believers. The one who is sincere, so if there is a Muslim, he take you and he is sincere about taking you as a friend. Seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites, they call us hypocrites, and disbelievers as a friend. He has no connection with Allah. That's it. He is not a Muslim. He's an apostate. If he take you really and he mean it as a friend. He has no honor, which means the Muslims, they can attack him and they can rape his wife. No mercy, no protection, which means they can take you as a slave and your property is a free for the Muslims to take it. Unless, here is the condition, unless that you guard yourself against them. It is for what? Deception, security. Save yourself from them. Taking it as wear security, saving yourself from them by speaking in a friendly way toward them while your heart dislike this. Do you see it? Do you see it, people? So when a Muslim he says to you, uh, I have Christian friends. Muslims don't have Christian friends. That's a lie. I'm not the one who's saying that. This is them. This is their this is by the way. The website we are reading from this is the official government website of the kingdom of jordan owned by the king of jordan who was just two weeks ago making a speech in a church in england or actually in germany i think no no sorry in italy in italy this is the king of jordan who people they think he is a civil etc this is his website the institute of ahl al-bayt amman Ahl al-Bayt is the family of Muhammad. Those, the, the king of Jordan, he claimed that he is descendant from the family of Muhammad. That explains why he's corrupt. Amman Jordan, in the website of the king of Jordan, it says you cannot take non-Muslims as a friend unless you speak to them in a friendly way. But in your heart, dislike this. This is a chapter 3, verse number 28. And let me post the link for you. This is the link for those who like to save it. This is the chapter is very famous. It's called the chapter of Taqiyya. Taqiyya means protection. Muslim is allowed to lie for the sake of protection. And protection here is not about, they say to you, oh, you are in war. Uh, what about somebody want to kill you? As you see here, you are, you are not allowed to take them as a friend. What war? What war? If you are in war, you, they will not be your friends anyway. They are not in war. In Islam is not allowed to lie. That's a big fat lie. Here we go. It's in front of you. Actually, Muhammad he says you can you can lie in three cases to your family, to your friends, and to your and and uh, and, and to your enemy. Who is left? In Islam, you are not allowed to lie. Yeah, right. In the Quran, chapter 5, verse number 51, it says it clearly, take not the Christians and Jews as a friends. In chapter 9, verse number 23, it says you cannot even take your family as a friends if they are not Muslims. Your father and your brother. <clears throat> Do you see it? So how he will take you as a friend? If a Muslim cannot take his own family as a friend, how he can take you as a friend? For me, I don't mind to have a Muslim friend. Why not? If I have a neighbor, I will visit him. I will be nice to him. But I know, based on his religion, that if he claimed that to be a friend to me, he's lying to me. That's why I don't trust him. Not because I don't like to have a friend from the Muslims. Absolutely not. For me, as a Christian, I don't mind to friend Hindus, Buddhas, anyone. If their family are not allowed to be their friends, do you see it? Their father, I'm not talking about a father in a metaphorical way. Your father, the one who slept with your mother, if he is not your, he's not a Muslim, you cannot take him as a friend. Do you see it? So 
when a Muslim he says to you you are my friend he is practicing taqiyya the only way I can believe a Muslim really being your friend if you don't believe in Islam and that make him not a Muslim so why you call him a Muslim you know what I mean if somebody he says to me I am a Muslim I believe in Islam well this is Islam this is the Holy Quran holy you see how holy it is it's a lot of holiness right I say you know I see many people they say to me I have a Muslim friend and they are nice well okay I don't know uh, you are saying to me what you are saying to me you, you better believe yourself no problem but according to me this is not Islamic your Muslim friend if he is really a Muslim he follow the Quran who is a Christian a Christian is the one who do what Jesus said correct guys is that true it's not somebody his name is a Christian Prince it's not his name someone his name is James or, uh, or George or Mary no you can name you know people they are we don't have something it's called you, you are born as a Christian you have to be born again so a person who is a Christian is somebody he follow the steps of Jesus same for Muslims a, a person we call him Muslim not because his name is Muhammad but because he believe in this so ask him do you believe in the Quran if he say yes that's it he's lying to you you know what I'm saying is that Quran or I'm making things up this is Quran this is their translation not even my translation chapter 9 verse 23 in chapter 5 verse 51 it says the same but in this case you cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends just to change the chapter it's very clear saying you cannot take a Christians and Jews as a friends or protectors as simple as that do you see it what do you want more clear evidence all who you believe take not the Jews and the Christians for your friends and protection Still, you want to say to me that I have a friend, he is a Muslim. And again, I am not against having a Muslim friend, you know. We believe that uh, we as a human, we should be friends to each other, why not? But because of the Quran, I cannot trust a Muslim if he says to me, I am a friend. Even if he's a very nice person, even if he's a really fantastic person, because you never know, maybe there's somebody who is a good person, right? But because of this verse, as long as he believes in the Quran, the, the Quran the Quran for him is a holy order of God It's not a joke you see when I say to you in the book of John if I say to you in the in the in the book of Mark in the book of Luke or etc if I say to you that the Bible says that the one who who deny the father and the son is an Antichrist can I deny that I cannot that's it either I believe in that book or I don't There is no compromise. So if this is his holy book, well, this is his holy book. And his holy book is very clear. They cannot take you as a Christian, as a Jew, as a friend. And by the way, if they cannot take a Christian or a Jew or non-believer as a friend, that's me. Muslims have no friends. Correct? Based on this verse, that's me. Muslims have no friends. We showed you two verses. Three verses, 551, 923, and we show you 328, where it says that you cannot take them as a friend unless you are lying. You speak to them in a friendly way, but your heart is just like this. And this is allowed, as you see, to lie. When you say to me, unless, unless you speak to them in a friendly way, while your heart is like this, it means you're allowed to lie. And this is what is called Taqiyya, chapter 3, verse number 28. Every Muslim in the West, especially those who promote Islam, they pray this, they, they play Taqiyya. Taqiyya. Protection. We have to protect Islam. Anyone?
and by the way the reasons they don't want to take you as a friend because you are a dirty or filthy you are a, you are not a human being you are not a creature like them you know do you remember what Muhammad he said what is the the Quran chapter 3 verse number 28 20, 110 it says that the Muslims are the best of mankind The Muslims are the best of mankind. The verse, you true Muslims are the best of the people ever raised for mankind, mean the best of the people for the people who bring them and the chain and the, with the chains around their necks until they embrace Islam. Do you see the duty of the da'wah? You see the Muslim, they say to you, we have a da'wah team in the speaker corner. This is not da'wah team, this is garbage. In Islam, you don't do that. You bring them with the chains around their neck. But because now they are weak, they cannot force you with the chain around your neck. Do you see it? Is that my statement? Is it me fabricating things? Is it me making up things? No. This is in the front of you. This is what their book. This is their prophet. This is their hadith. Is that a da'if hadith? No, this is Sahih Bukhari. Debate you, boxing Muslim? Okay, I'm debating you, boxing Muslim. What do you want to say to me? Go ahead. Boxing Muslim want to debate me. Okay, I'm debating you now. Go ahead. Start. Start your boxing. Are you there, boxing Muslim? Start. Say something. Go ahead, boxing. By the way, as long you are good in boxing, uh, do you know how your prophet he lost all his teeth? Was it by boxing or by a rock? And how he was able to recite the Quran after that? I guess Muhammad was reciting the Quran like this: Bismillah, How somebody he have no teeth he recite Quran? Are you there boxing? Look, the second I mention his name, he died. I don't know what happened. He's playing dead now. Like, you see, they think I, I don't see their text. They, suddenly they are heroes. The second I mention their name, they play dead. They, they are gone. In the Muslim translation, they say to you that they broke his teeth. What teeth? One teeth. Your prophet is not good in boxing. Look what happened to him. Anyone? All right, forget about him. Maybe he's looking for the teeth of the prophet now. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. Did we have a good time, guys? I have only 28 dislike. I am so disappointed. I am a Christian prince, and yet 28 dislike. Muslims are, come on, do something. 28 only dislike. Why? I mean, this is not a show respect. Only 28 dislike. After all what I showed you, the prophet is lying. The prophet fabricating science. The prophet is corrupting your book. The prophet is making fake statement, and you give me only 28 uh, dislike. I mean, this is not even fair. A person like me should have like a thousand dislike. Have you ever heard in YouTube somebody asking people to give a dislike except me? <laughs> I will tell you, brother, the reason for that. Because my name is Dakar Naik, and because I understand the word differently. When somebody give me that like, I feel better. That means I'm a very good actor. When the kuffar and the infidel brother, they insult me and they give me that like, I feel better. It's like a fuel for me, brother.
Thank you, Allah, brother. So I think it's clear now, right? Anyway, guys, don't forget to download the video. My video don't stay long in in YouTube, so you better download them, post them again in your page, and feel free to have them in your page and get more subscribers, so we can share the word with the Lord. Sorry, the the word of the Lord with everybody. And here we, by the way, the good thing we do that we show always a reference. It's not a guy showing himself in the camera making a speech. As you see, I say nothing. I just read for you what is there. Nothing is my own. It's your books. It is your translation. It's your website. It is your uh, your money. Thank Allah. Thank you. The Muslim they spend money to publish this, brother. Brother, the Muslims are so nice to us. They want to teach us about Islam, brother. What I will do without you, Muslims? Hmm? What we will do without you if you are not helping us and it's spending your money to those make with those website for us? We are very, very grateful. So I want to say thank you for everybody. May the Lord bless you. And I hope you will be able to go again soon. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. We will see. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you already subscribed, don't forget to unsubscribe and then subscribe again because that makes you feel better and something new will come to your life. This is what's called deception of Allah. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false, full of lies and deceptions. And we are here to expose it. If you like to read more, to know more, you can get my books from Amazon.com or Amazon Germany or France. We have my books in many languages. And lately we have our book in Spanish in case you speak Spanish. Thank you very much. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon. Bye-bye.